I'm Amy Jo Martin. Welcome to the Why Not Now show. You know that thing you've been thinking about doing? Yeah, that one. Why not now? Have you ever actually taken the time to ask yourself, what's stopping me? Let's talk it through. This is your chance to give that idea the attention it deserves and take action. Each episode, I have a chat with a fascinating person from entrepreneurs to athletes, celebrities, my parents, rocket scientists, and all walks of life. We talk through a critical time when they've asked themselves, why not now? We dissect that day or even that moment, step by step. Today, we're covering my favorite topic, and that is time management. It's so funny. The other day on Instagram stories, I shared a couple of just my short tips and tricks on time management and people went a little bonkers about it. So I thought, let's do a podcast, a fairly quick, simple, dialed in podcast about my top time management tips. And if you have some, please find me on social, email me, do whatever you can to share yours because I'm always looking for more. So I have nine, and I'm about to share them with you. Before I do, time is obviously the most valuable asset we have. And one of the things that I love to teach and really focus on in the beginning with my female entrepreneurs that I work with is that if you can't get a hold of of time, of your time, of your um the way that you manage your day and and shaking hands with the clock versus feeling like the clock is always chasing you, then it really doesn't matter what you're trying to do because you have to have that foundation. And so it's it's absolutely critical in being able to achieve a why not now idea, regardless of what it is. If you are wanting to start a business, if you are ramping up a side hustle, if you're wanting to lose weight, if you're wanting to go on a trip, Whatever it may be, you have to have time to do that. And in a lot of cases, it's incremental time of what else is already scheduled in your day and your other priorities. Being able to design my own day and do it in the most efficient way is a non-negotiable for me. I'm a bit of a time management nerd, so when I find something that allows me to be more efficient and effective, to get the most out of my day, I want to share it with everyone. So here's the scoop. I have a new tool in my productivity tool belt, and it's called monday.com. My team and I have never felt more organized professionally and personally, and my to-do list is no longer the boss of me. I feel more in control because every project, initiative, date, and task is captured and organized in one place. And my team is in the loop and involved every step of the way. We are in lockstep. Monday.com is like having a brand new operating system. Everything has its own home, deadline. You can see the team members associated with the tasks and it's color coordinated. So you can easily navigate your own task list. We all have multifaceted jobs, businesses, and lives. With Monday, you're able to keep all of these components organized in their own compartments, but you're also one click away from seeing the big picture and how they all integrate together. Creating systems and procedures within your day and business saves a lot of time. For example, my team and I have a dedicated Monday.com board for this very podcast. Did you know that there are 28 steps involved in getting one podcast ready for air? 
It's the same exact process every single time. And it's a system that we have put into place. So we know the various key steps are assigned to certain people, and we've mapped out the entire process from start to finish within this one board. This allows us to be streamlined. It cuts back on the amount of emails exchanged as well as the amount of meetings needed. One feature I love is that my social media content calendar is built inside of monday.com. I finally have one that I actually use, I like, and it's embedded into my overall calendar as well. Another feature we use every single day is the Google Doc integration. You know I love a good spreadsheet. I can pull them into monday.com and edit them right there versus having 97 tabs open on my computer, which is extremely distracting and inefficient. If how we spend our days is how we spend our lives, then I can't think of anything more important than using the time in our days wisely. Head to hey.monday.com forward slash Amy Jo Martin to start your free trial today. That's H-E-Y dot Monday dot com forward slash Amy Jo Martin. Here we go. Nine tips. Number one, time box yourself for certain projects. It seems so simple, but so often we kind of just get loosey-goosey, and before you know it, you've spent an hour, you know, maybe surfing the internet, looking on Instagram, and working on a project at the same time. Nope. You got to focus, right? Something that I use is called the Pomodoro Method, and this is actually something that was created in the 1800s I started researching. Basically, in the most simplistic terms... You set your timer for 25 minutes, and 25 minutes is a magic number. Don't try to do 35. Don't try to do 20. Try the 25 to begin with because that's the number that allows our brains to focus, yet we know there's a reprieve at the end. So after 25 minutes, you can take five minutes off, reset, get a cup of coffee, run to the restroom, just change your state a little bit. And then you can go another 25 minutes, but be really strict about time boxing and don't do anything else during that 25 minutes. It could be writing on your computer. It could be cleaning your house, whatever it is, focus. And I guarantee you will be much more effective and efficient in terms of, um, what you could do otherwise with multitasking. So the multitasking thing, I'm sorry, but. I just, I don't believe in it anymore. I used to, hasn't worked out well. So you can look it up. It's called Pomodoro and it's P-O-M-O-D-O-R-O and um, 25 minutes and then you take a break. So these are intervals. So let me know how that goes for you. In fact, I'm doing it right now. This episode will not be longer than 25 minutes because I'm doing the Pomodoro. All right, time management tip number two. You want to create a to-do list and a to-do today list. They are two different things. So if you just have one long list of everything you need to do, hello, being overwhelmed, right? It's how are you going to prioritize? There's only so much time in a day. The first thing you can do is help yourself out by not being overwhelmed. So what I do is I use Evernote. I've been using it for more than 10 years now. I can literally find... A note I took 10 years ago in about five seconds or less because it's just the way I've been organizing them. And so it's my favorite thing. You you can have a mobile app too. No, they don't sponsor the show, but maybe they should. If anyone's listening from Evernote, hello. Anyway, I have an Evernote, or it could just be a, a long list in notes on your computer. It could be something you write down if you want to, but it's gonna probably be long because it's there's plenty of things to do. Then what I do next is Each day, I have a three by three sticky note, three by three, not one of those big, gigantic sticky notes, a small, regular size sticky note. And that is my to do today list. And that keeps me from getting overwhelmed. 
And so these are two different things. And in our minds, we're able to compartmentalize. Yes, I know I have a long to-do list, but it's all there. It's not going anywhere. I know it will be there for me to refer to. But my to-do today list is a sticky note, handwritten, no mouse type font (laughs) handwriting. Use your regular handwriting. And um, it can travel with you. It can be on your laptop. It could be in your car, wherever. It's sticky. So there's my to-do versus to-do today list. And as far as personal versus professional, on the to-do list, the long one, I break those up. Two different. I've got my personal stuff. I've got my professional stuff, my work stuff. On my to-do today list, it all goes on that one sticky note because if I have to do it, I have to do it. If there's an errand that I've got to run, it's going to take time. I need to allocate for it. It's going on the sticky note. All right, tip number three, own your meetings. Take control of your meetings. So often we will have these hour blocks on our calendar for meetings, but you know what? Rarely do meetings take an hour. They shouldn't. And if your meeting is taking an hour, hopefully there's some sort of collaborative ideation going on or something because... You should be able to get in and out of a meeting in 20 minutes. So stop allocating an hour for something that could take 15 to 20 minutes. And if you really just want to start conservatively, give yourself 30 minutes, but no more hour-long meetings. The other thing you can do, stand up during your, your meetings. So if you stand up during your meetings, you're more likely to be efficient and effective and get things done and take care of business. A lot less you know, fluff and chatter, (laughs) unnecessary chatter. And then the third thing you can do to own your meetings is go on a walking meeting. So not only are you getting fresh, you know, air, some exercise, but your brain does function differently when you are up and moving around versus just sitting down at a conference room table. So in the corporate world, and when I was working for brands and and in the corporate environment, we loved meetings, right? Everything would be a meeting. Let's set a meeting for that. Let's set a meeting for that. Challenge whether or not you even need a meeting. Definitely time box it to 30 minutes, less if you can. Stand up during it if you can. And you can also do a walking meeting. So what's interesting is when the conversation's over and you've discussed what you needed to discuss, then the walk is over. So make sure that it's a round trip, like some sort of Stay close by. You don't want to get too far down the road. All right. Time management tip number four. Use voice texts as much as possible. Voice notes and voice texts. Sometimes, oftentimes, in my case recently, these can replace and serve the same function as a meeting or a phone call. And it's much more efficient and effective because you're going, you're going to be direct in your voice text. So lately, I've been taking very few, if any, phone calls. I just don't want to be blocking up my calendar with phone calls when I'm here supposed to be on maternity leave, my alternative maternity leave. And I know that usually it doesn't take long to get through uh, the conversation that needs to be had. And sometimes you don't even have to, to be speaking live. So, But what we tend to do when we get on the phone is we stretch it out and it takes longer than it actually needs to. So I send voice notes and voice texts. So via text, via email, whatever makes sense. Oftentimes text is quicker. And then even if you're using Slack, there are different apps that you can use that are compliant with voice texting as well. So try it out. See, just try. Just give yourself a little challenge to see if you can avoid a meeting or a conversation, a live conversation by using a very thought through, thorough, but direct voice text. And my guess is this is going to open up a lot of time in your in your calendar, but you will be surprised at how effective this can be on both ends. Because if you think about it, it's a gift to the other person because you are giving them time back in their day as well. All right, tip number five, emails. The topic of emails, oh wow. This is something I struggle and literally lost sleep over for years because my inbox was just so overwhelming and daunting. And what I've ended up doing is realizing 
emails are boomerangs, right? Usually what you send out is going to come back to you in some way, shape, or form. So back to the whole voice text tip prior to this. Sometimes a voice text is much more effective than an email. Secondly, what I've started to do is I do have an autoresponder, and I answer the top five questions that people reach out to me about and give them a place to go, whether I'm redirecting them to someone else, sending them to a form, giving them a link to more information online. I probably, oh, geez, I would say I, I've been able to avoid 80% of email transactions because of this. And it doesn't mean you don't check your inbox. It doesn't mean you tell people you're not answering email. But what it does is it gives them a place to go and answers their questions before you even have to spend time responding in the same way over and over. So write up your template, give people a place where they need to go if they have XYZ question, and you'll be surprised at how well this reduces your inbox. The other thing you can do is use Slack. I've been able to decrease my email volume by so much just through the use of Slack that um, it's it's literally giving me sleep back in my day, in my night. It's literally giving me more time in my day. It's allowing me to sleep better at night. So don't be afraid to take the offensive with your email. All right, time management tip number six, turn your notifications off. Create a zen, silent space to focus. Now, this means your phone. This means your computer. This means if you are on a Mac, then go up to the right-hand corner where you see three dots and three lines, upper right, as far as you can go, upper right-hand corner. Click, and you will see a Do Not Disturb feature. This is your friend. I love this feature. Click it on, and you will be free. You'll be free from all of the buzzes and the beeps and the flashes. And if you try to tell me, oh, well, I just turn my volume down and I don't hear them. If you're seeing them, if they're popping up in any respect, even if it's a little icon in your in your tray down in your dock that's showing a little red number notification, it's distracting and I guarantee it's taking away from your focus, which is taking away from your time management. So turn your do not disturb on. Turn off your notifications everywhere. If Alexa is talking to you or Surrey or whatever, <laughs> turn them off too. Um, yeah, that's it's very simple, but it's very effective. And you might be surprised at how many places and spaces have buzzing and beeping and flashing that want to get your attention. And hot tip, bonus, by using the Do Not Disturb feature, you are avoiding notifications to pop on your screen when you are sharing your screen. If you are presenting in person or sharing your screen in a virtual meeting, you won't have random text messages and things popping up for your calendar notifications. Sometimes can be a little embarrassing if your mom's texting you in the middle of a presentation or whatever, something even worse could be happening in terms of embarrassment. So there's a little trick there too. All right. Tip number seven, time batch your projects. Time batch your tasks. So what does this mean? It means, let's say I'm going to record podcasts today, and that's what I'm going to do. I have three or four back-to-back. -back. It allows me to stay in my same mindset and not have to switch gears in a big way. This keeps me more efficient and effective once again. So there's been plenty of research that's been done on, and this is kind of on the same topic of multitasking, but when we switch tasks or if we just even toggle over from one window in our computer to another tab and we're going from email to Facebook or we're going from email to Googling something, our brains have to switch gears too. And we lose momentum doing this. And so you can Google this. I don't have the stats off the top of my head, but trust me, they're there. When we switch gears a lot, we're losing momentum and we're wasting time. So the more you can batch and bucket your tasks, 
the better. So maybe that's even laundry or who knows, whatever, you know, things you have on your to-do list that are similar, try batching them. Try doing, you know, three hours of task type A (laughs) and use Pomodoro during it. So that'd be 25 minutes um, for each interval and take a quick break in between and just see how that works for you. So time batching. All right, tip number eight, my favorite, start saying no. That is one guaranteed way to get more time back in your day, getting extremely selective on what you choose to say yes to. So one way you can say no very gracefully, I've been using this for years, is tell people you have another commitment. And you know what? That commitment could be you. That commitment is you. It could be that you want to take a bath and read a book. It could be spending time with your family. It could be working on a different project. It could be taking a walk. Whatever it is, you do have another commitment, and that is you. And you are always a commitment to yourself. So this works at any time. You can start using this. I welcome you to try it out. You can start small if you want, but it goes like this. No, I have another commitment, but thank you. Okay, my final time management tip, tip number nine, read Essentialism by Greg McEwen. Go get that book. Get the audiobook or the hardback, whatever you want, but definitely read it. This is the only book I recommend people read in my Renegade Brand Boot Camp outside of my own book. Because it is gold, and I refer back to it all the time. Essentialism is a great way to kickstart a new relationship with time. So those are my nine time management tips. If you have more, reach out to me. Hit me up. I would love to hear yours. And I hope that you found this useful, and hopefully you will be implementing some of these tips and tricks and getting more time back into your day. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the show. Hit me up on social media to let me know what you think. I'm at Amy Jo Martin on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I want to hear your why not now moments so I can share them on the show. Just send me a note to why not now at amyjomartin.com. For show notes and other offers, you can visit amyjomartin.com forward slash why not now. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email newsletter for exclusive content and announcements. A big thanks to Rock Salt Music for all of the tunes by the talented John Coggins. And of course, a hat tip to Richard Gruer for editing and producing the show. I'll see you next time. And until then, why not now? Oh, 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 oh